Hey everyone, I'm Erica from the blog Butter Side Up, and today I'm going to show you how to make my sourdough hot cross buns. These are spiced with cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and cardamom, flecked with dried fruit, and topped with that iconic cross. All right, let's dive in and I'll show you how to make them. Feed your starter eight to 12 hours in advance. I like to feed 80 grams of starter with 90 grams each of flour and water. Your starter should double and be active and bubbly and pass the float test before you use it. In the bowl of a stand mixer, place one cup or 245 grams of warm milk, one cup or 240 grams of sourdough starter, three cups or 440 grams of all-purpose flour, one egg, three tablespoons of brown sugar, three tablespoons of white sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon of cloves, one eighth teaspoon cardamom, one and a half teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, and three quarters cup of currants or raisins. Knead the dough for three minutes. Add a quarter cup of butter, one tablespoon at a time, making sure to mix well between each addition. Continue to knead the dough for 15 to 20 minutes more or until you can achieve window pane. To test if you've achieved window pane, grab some of the dough and stretch it apart. You should be able to see light through it before it starts to tear. Transfer the dough to a greased glass bowl, cover, and allow to rise for 8 to 12 hours at room temperature or until the dough doubles. Weigh your dough and divide that weight by the number of buns you want to make. I made 12 buns and that worked out to about 97 grams per bun. But honestly, if you don't care about your buns being the same size, you can just eyeball it. Line a rimmed baking tray with parchment paper. Grab one of your portions of dough, pinch the corners together, flip it over onto your counter, cup your hands around it, and roll it around on the counter to create surface tension. See how that creates a nice smooth ball of dough? Transfer the rolls onto the prepared baking tray. Cover and allow it to rise for four to eight hours depending on how warm your kitchen is. The rolls should be nice and puffy. Whisk an egg with a little bit of water and brush the rolls with the egg wash. Now it's time to create that iconic cross. Put half a cup of flour into a bowl and mix it with three to five tablespoons of water until you form a nice paste. You don't want it to be too thin because otherwise it will run right off of the buns, but you also need it to be thin enough that you can pipe it. You can create a parchment paper cone if you like to, or it's really easy if you just use a Ziploc bag and then cut off the corner. Pipe crosses onto the buns going straight down the middle. Bake in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 23 to 25 minutes or until the rolls are nicely golden brown and register 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle. If you like, you can brush the rolls with a simple syrup or with some warmed apricot jam. I like using the apricot jam because then you don't have to make a simple syrup. And the apricot jam tastes lovely. If you want, you can also pipe an icing cross on top. Now my grandma would always pipe on an icing cross and I don't think she even did the flour cross. And if you do one, you don't really need the other, but the icing does add a little extra sweetness. In a small bowl, mix together half a cup of powdered sugar, one to two tablespoons of milk or cream, a quarter teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. Again, you don't want the icing to be too thin because otherwise it will run right off of the rolls, but you want it thin enough so that you can pipe it. You don't need to do both types of crosses. I just wanted to demonstrate both of them for you. And if I had to choose between them, honestly, I would choose the icing. It's probably not as authentic, but the flower cross actually gets a little bit tough and it's kind of hard to chew. Now these are wonderful warm from the oven, but the next day when they maybe get a little more stale, you can always toast them up and spread them with lots of butter and they're delicious that way as well. Just be careful because the frosting might burn in your toaster. So that's how to make my sourdough hot cross buns. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more food and cooking videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.